Welcome back. Kevin's Mobile Repair. We've got a Dodge Challenger with 3.6. This is going to be the same procedure with about every 3.6. So we have an oil filter housing that is leaking. Um, this one had already been done and the oil pressure switch that's back here was given a code even though it was a brand new part. So this is why I recommend using a Mopar part or something very very similar knockoff parts like yay do not do very well so this thing lasted all of a week uh customer had someone else put it in and uh yeah it didn't last very long granted that is an updated one that's an all metal one which is nice but that oil pressure sensor is no bueno so that's the factory style with the plastic got the upgraded plastic in there so they don't have that leak anymore uh, <clears throat> so make sure you get the latest revision if you're going to do this yourself but intake manifold's got to come off so you got your eight millimeters here 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 and here two bracket a bracket back here a bracket on the side i usually take the 10 millimeters off and then just pry the bracket back so you don't have to take the 15s off on the side now the one back here just take the two nuts off the whole intake manifold will slide this way once you have this bracket out of the way this one right here i just pry it back and put the 10 on uh less stuff to have to take off and of course take off all your vacuum connectors your throttle body connector map sensor all that this lower intake manifold also has to come off take off all your fuel injector plugs um did not have to take out the spark plug connectors something like that because uh, once it's there I got it swung it out of the way do make sure that you change your upper and lower intake gaskets as well otherwise it'll cause a vacuum leak especially if the age of the vehicle is older than four or five years um, let's see this is a t Torx bit to take that size that E8 so you got EA bolts. One, two, three, four, five. And this whole assembly comes right up. There is a O-ring right here for the back half. Make sure that comes out with the old one, otherwise that will get lodged down into the motor and you will have a oil leak once you fire this thing up. Um, I have matting and stuff to get as much of the oil and coolant out as possible. Uh, it will not get every bit, but it will get a majority of it so that way there's not a puddle, especially where the knock sensor is at. You don't want um, too much oil and too much coolant mixed in with electrical components like that. Um, I did drain the coolant. The drain is down there on the passenger side, not the bottom. It's easy to get to. Just put a drain bucket in there. So that way when you do take this off, because it does have a coolant hose attached to it right here. So that way you don't have a large amount of coolant that gets... Uh, drained up top here as well uh, other than that this is a pretty straightforward job it takes about three hours or so based off of the book um, but uh, does not take me all that long but uh, go slow this is your first time doing it uh, this is also prime time to do the spark plug if you're doing so because the intake manifold is off so that is why I'm also doing plugs and one ignition coil customer had a uh, number three misfire so getting all that done all at one time any questions or comments please feel free to let me know